Good morning, Facebook. Welcome to the 39.6 Facebook Live show. Today is episode number eight. We are gonna be talking about the five pillars of making money and why I invest in real estate syndications. Facebook, we are coming to you live. Uh, we are coming from uh, Quebec City in a VRBO. Um, we are on our last stop of our uh, Airbnb vacation in Canada. Actually, this is a VRBO. We do list our own property on both uh, Airbnb and VRBO, so we do like to see different types of properties. The processes are different through both different um, uh, websites. Uh, VRBO and HomeAway are basically kind of merged. And in Canada, they actually have a different uh, website that you kind of get filtered through. It's kind of interesting. Um, but uh, we are coming to you live from uh, Quebec City. Uh, this is the first time I've done a morning episode. Uh, we will be going uh, out for the for the day and wanted to get this episode in because I didn't get one in last night. So today I will be discussing uh, the five pillars of making money and ultimately how that leads me to uh, why we are primarily investing in real estate through syndications. And Shinola is saying, good morning. Good morning, Shinola. Good morning. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, the five pillars. So number one, when you're trying to make money, whether it's like in an investment uh, or in a business, you need some money, okay? You also need to have some time and you need hustle. These are the three things. Okay, now you don't necessarily need to have all three of these, um, but you need to have some of each of them, and often one person will have more of one than another, okay? So money, time, and hustle are your, your three main ways by which anybody makes money, okay? You can have absolutely no experience, no training or anything, and you can get yourself a part-time minimum wage job because you're willing to put in the time to do that. Okay, so um, if you put in the time, you can make money, okay? Now, if you have money, you can invest your money and you can make money, okay? And the third one is hustle. So money, time, and hustle. So I actually, I was just in Detroit this past weekend uh, and I was at this pop-up booth for Detroit Hustles Harder and I wish I had bought myself a, a shirt or a hat um, because Detroit hustles harder. It's just, it's just the way it is. Um, and hustle is, is, the, is the X factor, the one thing that basically, if you have the, the, the hustle, you don't need as much time, you don't need as much money, um, but you can get things done. You can get results, you can get results faster, okay? Now, when you work with a team of people, you wanna have people that have those three components, uh, and those three components if you're missing any one of those three, it's a lot harder to be successful, okay? Uh, working by yourself, nobody has all three. You can't have all the money you want to invest and you can't have all the time and all the hustle all the time, okay? A lot of entrepreneurs, self-employed people, they get started working by themselves and they have to put in all three of those themselves and it makes it a lot harder to be successful. Most small businesses, are not successful over time because you don't have a team of all three of those components, okay? Now, the two other components, uh, these are actually like the, the power pack on top of those three, okay? You do need those three, but if you add these two other components, they're kind of one and the same, but they're different. That's what really helps guarantee success, okay? And that is experience and expertise, okay? So we have money, time, hustle, and then experience and expertise. So some people, they've done something before, um, but they haven't necessarily done it successfully. So they may have experience, um, but they're not necessarily experts at it, okay? But on the other hand, you can have people who've learned a lot about something. They might've read a lot of books. They might've gone to a, a weekend seminar, uh, and they may have uh, expertise to some degree more so than other people who have not been educated, okay? But expertise without any experience is just book knowledge. Okay, you really need to have the two of them. For anybody who's actually worked uh, in a small business, uh, you realize 
You know, there's always hurdles in any business in going from one step to the next step. And you often are making uh, two steps forward and one step back. And that's the nature of growing a business. But um, if you have the expertise and the experience, you're going more up than you are going back. Okay, but you still need to have those three core components of money, time, and hustle. Okay, now I work uh, a full time job. Okay, a lot of people out, out there watching this, you guys work full time jobs. And uh, if you're a physician, well, your full time job is not really a full time job, it's way more than that. Okay, people ask me, how many hours do I work? That's like the most least relevant. Uh, question with regard to how difficult my job is because it's not about the time it's, it's, it's the stress okay now um, when I get home I don't have a lot of time to run a whole nother whole other complete business okay I don't have the uh, I just don't have the hustle anymore because I've used it all up at my day job okay and a lot of people are in this same situation okay so you might not have the, the time and the hustle anymore to really make your money, but you have your money to make your money, okay? Because your W-2 job or your other main job is generating the cash flow, okay? For most people, you're probably making, oh, okay, not most people, but a lot of people out there watching, if you are highly educated professional, you're earning a high income, your income from your job in a lot of ways is the highest and best use of your time okay however when it comes to investing you want to use the least amount of your time because you just don't have it so i always think of two things when i am investing in something not only what is my return on my investment of money but my return on investment of time okay and you're not going to see that on paper okay you're going to see you can look at certain investments and people say oh i earned 30 percent last year on my investments well, that's fantastic, okay? But how much did you work to get that 30%, okay? And is that 30% reproducible, okay? So a lot of people uh, in, in the real estate world, they're hustling, they're getting deals, okay? I know people who go door knocking on the foreclosure list and they'll spend like eight hours a day knocking on doors every single day. And when they're not actively knocking on the doors, they're at home finding deals, negotiating with people, okay? They're making it happen. But that is a lot of time, okay? So you'll hear the success stories. People will say, well, you know, I got this deal, I made myself $10,000, okay? Or I got this property for this price and now I'm earning 40% on my rental. Well, fantastic. Uh, that's 40% for the dollars that you invested. But you might have put in hours and hours and hours to get that deal. And that's just that one deal. There were other deals that you had or that were pursuing that didn't actually come to fruition, okay, to fruition. So you have to think of every single hour you put in on failed deals to get to the deal you want, okay? Once you start thinking about how many hours you put in um, and then you back calculate your return on investment, but if you paid yourself for all of those hours, your return on your investment actually is a lot lower, okay? so. Um, I like to invest in real estate. I also invest in, in index funds and my employer accounts. Um, but real estate gives me the types of returns that I like. I like cash flow. I like growth. Um, I like the stability of having an income producing asset that is tax efficient. Okay, so that, those are the reasons uh, why I like real estate as an asset class. Okay, now I own a number of single family properties. I still own one from training. I just went and visited there last week. It's still doing well in the Metro Detroit area. Uh, with property management in place, I still cash flow about $200 a month, uh, which is fine. It was only a $60,000 property when I bought it a decade ago. Um, it's worth more now. Um, but $2,000 a year or $200 a month in cash flow um, for the minimal amount of work I put into it is okay but it's only $200, okay? On average per month, I might have to put in a month, an hour into it because uh, even though I have property management, there's still some emails I need to do. Um, last month, I had to get new property insurance in place um, and had to call a number of people. I had somebody call a number of people for me, but still I had to 
deal with that process. And that did take hours, okay? Now, you have to question how much do you value your hour, okay? If I'm going to spend an hour of my time working outside of my job, I want to, risk, I want to earn at least $200, okay? Now, some people um, are in different situations... I may actually charge easily $500 when they're actually wanting my expertise in my very highly trained focus of my career. Uh, and I easily charge $500 an hour. I don't get those opportunities very often, but I'm e easily worth that much to somebody who needs like an expert opinion, okay? But if I'm not making $200 an hour on something, it's just not worth my time. So um, basically, at the end of the day, it's kind of a wash on that one rental property. Now, I still get the benefits of the appreciation. I do get some tax deductions. So like when I go home and visit the property, I can uh, utilize that trip as a business expense. But ultimately, it's $200, okay? So if I want to scale up and I want to have, let's say, $10,000 a month, well, I would need 50 of those units, okay, or 50 properties that generate $200 a month. Now, at the end of the day, if I'm doing all of that myself, even with property management, that's going to take time, okay? So, the way we invest in real estate now, with exception of our one Airbnb property, which is our own house, um, which we have hired help for housekeeping and etc., cetera, um, ultimately, we leverage all of those other things from other people. So, we invest our money, okay, and uh, we will find a deal or we will have people who find a deal with, let's say, 200 units, okay? So I invest my money and they, the sponsors who find the deal, deal with getting the mortgage, that's a big pain, okay? Get the property under contract and basically convince the sellers to choose them over the 10 other offers, okay? They put in their time, their hustle, their experience and their expertise to get those deals. You don't just buy a 200 unit property by yourself um, without having ever done this before. The sellers will just laugh at you, okay? It doesn't really even matter how much you offer them because they know that the likelihood of you closing that deal out and actually buying the property will be very low because if you've never done this before, um, you haven't gone through that whole process of one, raising the funds, two, getting the loan in place, and three, ultimately making sure that the property uh, is successful in the long term, okay? So sellers want to sell to people who can take the asset and manage it and be successful with that asset, okay? Um, so your money, but when you invest passively as an investor, you're not utilizing your time, you're not utilizing your hustle. Um, and if you've never invested in real estate before, you don't have any experience or expertise, okay? So you are truly being an investor. And what you're doing is you are utilizing your resource, the one that you have, which is money, to your highest and best use, okay? If you're a professional, if you're a physician, for example, if you were to try to actually um, do all the billing yourself, and actually call up the insurance companies, fill out the paperwork to collect the payments, which can go out 90 days from the date of service. If you were to schedule all of your appointments, if you were there to open and close the doors at the beginning and end of the day, if you were there cleaning the floors, um, if you were doing all the vitals, putting patients in rooms, this is how a lot of entrepreneurs start out. They try to do everything themselves, and that's no way to be successful as a business. Because you're doing things that you're not trained to do, and you're doing things that ultimately don't necessarily add value. You need to focus on the things that you can provide that provide the most value and outsource the other things. Now, it's hard to do that getting started in a small business. I understand that. But in something like real estate, where you're buying a big enough property, you have the economies of scale working for you, okay? So you have people who are between the property, okay, you have the property management, but then you have another layer of people who are the deal sponsors, who are between the property management and you, okay? So when you own your own single family property, it's basically you and then your property. Now, if you have property management, then there's property management in the middle, but you still have to deal with them. When you have a big enough asset, you have one more layer between you and the property manager. 
And that's where you can basically get rid of all of your time, all of your headaches, okay? Because you have somebody to deal with all of that. And that's the number one reason I find people don't invest in real estate. They may have tried investing in real estate because they were trying to do it all themselves. And they realized this is just way too much work. It's too stressful. Well, that's because they didn't have a system in place to lead them to be successful, okay? So you have a big enough asset. You have the sponsors of the deal who manage the entire asset. You are strictly a passive investor. You write a check and you get what we call mailbox money, okay? Now, in reality, most places, most deals I'm in, they send you the check by an uh, automated clearinghouse ACH payment into your checking account. But you could get a check in the mail and it just starts showing up there because you're buying a property that is a stabilized asset that generates cash flow, okay? Um, and so ultimately you get all the benefits of real estate minus a small portion because you put another layer of asset management um, between you and the property, but you also have their expertise and experience to make sure they're getting an asset that's profitable, okay? Most people starting out, they're gonna buy something and it's not necessarily gonna make the money because they just don't know what asset to buy at the right price and how to manage it efficiently, okay? And so in a lot of ways, you not only, you, you decrease your returns in some respect, but you actually get better returns because you've already gotten past the whole learning curve of how to be successful in real estate. So if you're just starting out, you're going to get much better returns than you ever would have if you had done it all by yourself from the very beginning, okay? So you actually can get more of the return and less of your time. And that's the way investing should be because once you do that, and the only thing in place is your money, you can scale that to infinity, okay? I used to have a plan of buying one property every year for 10 years. That would take me 10 years to get to 10 properties, okay? But I can get much farther, much faster by utilizing other people, leveraging their time, hustle, expertise, and, exp uh, and experience so that I can get to a much bigger place much faster by just doing what I do best earning money for my W-2 job, and then investing that money uh, with other people, okay? So uh, that's it from today from Quebec. Um, tomorrow, if I get to do an episode, we will kind of go into more details of how we actually, um, what actually is the process into getting into a real estate syndication. Um, and this week, I will um, be focusing more on real estate because I've had a lot of people ask me a lot of questions and want to delve into this further. Um, so looking for, to forward to more talks. Today's uh, end of episode eight. In recap, the five pillars of making money. Money, time, hustle, expertise, and experience. You need all five of these to really be on the fast track. If you only have one of them, find somebody else to do the other four and you'll get the most reward for the, what you can put into the deal. All right, until next time, think about what you can do, what your money can do for you, so you don't have to work for your money. Good night, or good day.